In this video, we're going to talk through the worked out solutions to final exam review number one, and that is for semester two of Algebra One. Instructions say determine and explain the family of functions, linear, exponential, quadratic, or absolute value, uh, given the different representations. So, for problem one, we're given an equation. Based on that equation, because I see an x in the exponent, I know that this is an exponential function. I'm going to talk through these instead of write out. Well, I guess I'll write them out. Okay. There is an x in the exponent. In other words, it's in the form y equals a times b to the x. Looking over here, now I could combine like terms to make this look a little more familiar. And this looks like it's in y equals mx plus b form. This is linear. In other words, it's a polynomial with a degree of 1. So it is polynomial with degree 1. Or it's in the form y equals mx plus b. All right, moving down here. I see a v-shaped graph, and I know that any v-shaped graph is an absolute value function. I know the domain is the possible x values, and the x values go to the left and right. So because this graph never stops going to the left or right, the domain is all real numbers. The range are the possible y values, and because this graph has a maximum at the vertex and then it goes down, we're going to have all the values, y values that are less than or equal to the y value of the vertex. The vertex have coordinates 1, 6, so the range is y is less than or equal to 6. Looking over here, because I see an x squared, I know that this is quadratic. It is a polynomial with degree 2. Or I see an x squared. The transformations of this function from the parent function, because this is in vertex form, where a is 2, I know that is a vertical stretch meaning it is narrower than the parent function. And because k is 4, I know that this is translated up 4 units. Looking at this function, because it is a u-shaped graph or a parabola, we know that this is a quadratic function. The domain will be all real numbers because all the domain of the x values, the x goes to the left and right, and this graph never stops going to the left, nor does it stop going to the right. The range of the passable y values, and y goes up and down, and we see we have a lowest value here, and that looks like where y is negative 4, and then we're above that, so it's y is greater than or equal to negative 4. Looking over here, I see an x inside of an absolute value bars. That tells me this is an absolute value function. Absolute, I'm spelling that wrong, absolute, there we go, value function, <coughs> excuse me. There is an x inside the absolute value bars. The transformations of this function from the parent function, again, a is 1, h is negative 2, and k is negative 5, tells me that we translate left 2 and down 5. And it is not vertically stretched or shrunk, nor is it reflected in the x-axis. And then scooching down here to number 7. Because this is a curve, but it doesn't go back up, I know that is an exponential function. That's an exponential curve. The domain, again, it goes. the graph goes on forever to the left and right, so the domain is all real numbers. The range, because this graph, you know, exponential functions approach the asymptote, but asymptote but never cross it. It looks like our asymptote is the x-axis, so y is always going to be above that x-axis, or y will always be greater than zero. Notice it's not equal to zero. Exponential functions approach an asymptote, so they never reach that value. Because the graph is a line, this is a linear function. Linear functions are, we can write in the uh, slope-intercept form, or point-slope form, or standard form. Because I can see the y-intercept is 3, and the slope is a negative down 3, right 4. 
I can write it in slope intercept form as negative 3 fourths x plus 3. Again, I rise a negative 3, I run a positive 4. That gives me my slope. The domain, because the graph goes on forever to the left and right, is all real numbers. And this time, because the uh, y values are the y values are all real numbers as well because the graph goes forever up and down. So all real numbers for both domain and range. Flipping to the back, number nine, I'm given a table, so I gotta look for the patterns in the table. I see that x is increasing by one each time and y, we're adding two, adding two, adding two. So as because x and y are both increasing at a constant rate, this is a linear function. Both x and y increase at a constant rate. The equation or rule, well, I can write that in slope intercept form. I will need my y intercept for that, so we're thinking y equals mx plus b. My y intercept is when x is 0, so I have to work backwards, so that would be 0, comma 6. My m is the slope. The slope is the change in y over change in x. So the y is changing by adding 2. The x is changing by adding 1. So my slope is 2. So y equals 2x plus 6. Moving on to number 10, I look at this pattern. And x is increasing by 1 again. So x is increasing at a constant rate. This time y, we are decreasing by 7 and then 5, and then 3, then 1, and then we start increasing. So when I see that, when I change from decreasing to increase, and I know this is either absolute value or quadratic, but because we're not decreasing and then increasing at a constant rate, I'm thinking it can't be absolute value, because that's like two lines being put together. So let's look at the second difference. We see we're adding 2 each time for our second difference. So our second difference is plus 2. So this is a quadratic function because it is a common second difference. And the equation, well, we can write this in a couple different forms. We have vertex form, in which case we need the vertex. So that in blue. The vertex, where we change from increasing to decreasing, or what we're symmetric about. And we also need the a value. Your, our a value is going to be the second difference divided by 2. Or in this case, a is 1. So we have y equals, now if a is 1, I don't have to write it. x, because the x coordinate is positive 1, I'm going to minus 1 from x, and then keep the sign of the y coordinate. We can also try and do vert, or uh, sorry, intercept form. In order to do that, we need the x-intercepts. So I'll take another highlighter. Looking at the x-intercepts, that's when y is 0. So we have 0, 0, and 2, 0 is the x-intercepts. So to make one x-intercept is x equals 0, I just have an x, and then x minus 2 will give me my x-intercept of 2, 0. And then if we want standard form, we can convert from intercept form or vertex form to standard form. It'll be easiest to convert from intercept form to standard form by simply distributing the x. So y equals x times x is x squared, x times negative 2, negative 2x. And those are all three forms of quadratic. Looking here at number 11 now, we're noticing x, again, increasing at a constant rate. Always got to check that. And y, we're subtracting 4, or sorry, adding 4, then adding 8. Okay, so we're not adding the same number each time, and that doesn't look symmetrical. Let's see, if I look at what I'm multiplying by, I multiply by 2, yep, each time I'm multiplying by 2. So because I'm multiplying by the same number each time, this pattern has a common ratio. That means this is exponential. So the y values have a common ratio. Or as x increases at a constant rate, y is being multiplied by the same number each time. So my equation, if we remember exponential, y equals a times b to the x, where a is the y-intercept, that's that value right there. So 8 times b is the common ratio, in this case 2. So y equals 2 to the x. 
If the common ratio was a fraction, we'd have to make sure to have parentheses around it, but this time we don't need it. You could write it, if you wanted to, like this, with the parentheses, either way would suffice. As we look at the next one, I am adding one each time for x, and here I subtract one, oh, not five, subtract one, subtract one, oh, and Oh wait, no, I'm adding one. Oh my goodness, going from negative six to negative five, I'm adding one, adding one again. Now I start subtracting one. Those negatives threw me off. You know, on the final, if I were taking this and I wasn't sure whether I was adding or subtracting, I could always take any number minus the previous one and that'll tell me what the difference is. So negative five minus six, negative six would be a positive one. Negative four minus negative five, positive one. Negative five minus negative four, oh, and there we see the minus one. So, good thing to use to check, especially when we see those negatives. So, I'm symmetrical about a point. I'm increasing and decreasing, but I'm increasing and decreasing at a constant rate. So, when that happens, I know this is absolute value. So, here, um, we could say that we are increasing, then decreasing, at a constant rate. And I should say the y values are increasing and decreasing at a constant rate as x values increase at a constant rate. That would be the most complete explanation. The equation, I remember it's y equals a times absolute value of x minus h plus k. Our h and k come from our vertex, so if we look at that, our vertex is right here. 1 comma negative 4, because we're the same on both sides, we change from increasing to decreasing. So I'm going to have an x minus 1 minus 4, remember it's opposite the sign for the x coordinate, keep the sign on the y coordinate. And then the a value, we know it's either 1 or negative 1, and when I look at this, we start increasing and then hit the vertex and decrease. So because the absolute value function is opening down, this is going to be a negative. And there's our equation. Looking at number 13. Hmm, I see an x and a y. The x isn't in the exponent, so it's not exponential. It's not being squared, so it's not quadratic. And there's no absolute value bars, so it's not absolute value. But it doesn't quite look like what we're used to seeing with linear. So let's see, if I solve this for y, 8 times y, I could divide everything by 8. And now I could see that this is, both of those are divisible by 2, so that's 3 fourths x minus 9 eighths equals y. So it does look like y equals mx plus b form. So this is a linear function. I know this because it is a polynomial of degree 1, meaning I see an x. That's just to the first power. Or I could say it's in y equals mx plus b form. Um, so I can see it's linear. Anytime I have a polynomial, meaning I have x to some power, um, and it's 1, I know it's linear. And finally over here, because I see an x squared, I know that this is quadratic. So this is a polynomial of degree 2. Or, in other words, I see an x squared and no higher exponent. I know that's quadratic. And that's it for our first review.